Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I had another awakening. <laughs> I'd like to share a story about a man who's, well, this has probably happened to a lot of people. If you've been online or walk in the street and run into somebody that's flirting with you and they're married. Well, I had a married man flirt with me. I didn't know he was married. Okay. I thought he was a single man from what I was told. So this went on for months and I thought, oh, he's single. So no big deal. Well, he was flirting with me while he was married and he finally revealed the truth that he was married and he went on to tell me his story and I asked him to go to church with me and he revealed the truth. So long story short, that ended that whole situation, but I was pursuing him for the short time that I thought he was single and come to learn that he was married and this really bothered me and I ran into him today and he shunned me and that's okay because I have the Holy Spirit and I knew something was stirring in my spirit about this and I'm not pursuing a married man that's just the way it is there's no interest in pursuing a married man and nor do I have to because I already have somebody in the wings. So that's not the case. The thing is, is that a flirting relationship is adultery. A married man who, or a woman who's flirting and they're married is considered adultery. It is looking at another woman or man when you're married is adultery. And I know that this doesn't sound like a conversation we have often, but we're having it and that's the way it is. But this is the world we live in. This is flirting leads to fornication. And this is what we deal with as Christians or non-Christians. One night stands whatever you call it, it is a debacle, okay? You get tied into something and you feel awful because that person doesn't come back or they ghost you or something worse. Who knows what the situation will bring to you. So we're talking about it because it's a situation that lonely people get into and you don't have to be lonely to get into it. You could just get caught up in something and that's the way it is. And Christian relationships should be Christian. So that's why when I asked him to go to church to test who he really was, he finally told me the truth that he was married. Hello, I found out the truth. I needed to know where he stood in his decisions in his personal life but had I not asked him to go to church that would have been the question that I would have lingered on and not known the truth of where he stood in his personal life but I did I asked the big question I took the courage to ask him I, I figured this is the way I'm going to find out where, where he stand and I found out that he was married and I wasn't led to believe anything else I didn't know for sure where he stood I didn't know what his status was I had no idea I didn't even know his last name pretty much and this has been going on for quite some time None, nonetheless today he shined me and that, that's okay I'm not worried about it. Not in the least bit. I'd rather be shunned than for me to go on in 
this fantasy land, believing that he cared about me. Because <laughs> he doesn't care about his own wife if he's flirting with somebody else. That's the truth of the matter. And this is the truth. A good man who loves his wife or loves his girlfriend doesn't cheat, okay, or lie. And the thing is, is that we who women are weaker in this area, we need to be led to the right man who's going to treat us like and honor us as women. And a lot of women are led astray because of the men we pick and choose. And I think that men are the leaders of the household. And Jesus is the leader of the household if you are single as a woman. So one of the things is if you don't have a man leading the household, then who is going to be your leader? The head of the household is Jesus Christ. He is the lead. He's the one that sets the standard in your household. So if you come from a long history of promiscuity or, you know, all those things, situations I just described, adultery, fornication, all that stuff, you got to find a cycle to break that cycle and say, Jesus sets the standard in my life. I have to start somewhere with the Lord, and it starts here and now. That's why whenever you get delivered of all that stuff that happened to you in your past, you break the cycle of sin in your life, that's when the standard of living changes, and you become, walk, you, you not become, but you walk the walk, and you start talking the talk. Walking the walk and talking the talk is all cheap talk if you're still living this way. And this is the standard that I want for my life. I want to walk and talk this in my life. I want a standard in my life. Not the standard that I keep running into, that I keep finding myself in. And when I say I want to change life in Jesus Christ, I want to change life in Jesus Christ. I don't want this old life. And it keeps creeping up. So I know this is the devil's work in my life. And Jesus is the one that's going to deliver me out of this. Only Jesus can do that. But I'm sharing this because it's true. This is what happens to me. And this is what happens to a lot of people. And I'm sharing it because this is what happened to me. And I found myself in a situation where I didn't want to date. I know celibacy works because it works in my life. It's the greatest gift you could ever give to God is being celibate. It is. It's a blessing. There's peace of mind. You don't have to worry about what you did the night before. That includes sobriety. That includes everything else. Just having a sober life altogether. Sober, celibacy, all that. Having a right life with Jesus Christ means abandoning the old ways. The old way of life means abandoning the old isms. And that means casting out rebuking, renouncing all the old things that you used to do or you could have done and walking a straighter path. But that path is not easy. Okay, it says the Lord said, the Lord said that we walk a narrow, narrow path. He wasn't kidding. He said it's a narrow path. So with that said, my prayer is that we, we will run into situations, but we have to have the discernment to know when to walk away and when to turn to the Lord and how to turn to the Lord in those situations and not be a victim of circumstances and be overcomers in Jesus Christ.
And that's all I really have to say because I hope I shared something that was intimate but important so that the next person that watches this video says to themselves, you know, I'm not alone. I'm right with you. And believe me, there's a lot of people that probably could relate to this. And I hope you do. Praise Jesus for all the, I don't know, just praise the Lord he shunned me because I needed to do this video for this reason. I'd rather be shunned and dis discarded like a narcissist does to ghosts or whatever they have to do to, to learn the lesson that Jesus wants me to learn. I'd rather be lied to and come back to the Lord than to find out that I'd made an even worse mistake and got involved. But the truth is, I didn't get lied to. I He did tell me the truth. The thing is, I didn't get heavily involved in it enough where I did find out the truth. And I didn't get involved enough where I sinned against the Lord. So for that matter, I praise God. I didn't get hurt. I didn't sin against the Lord. And I didn't commit adultery. On his part, he committed adultery against his wife. For that reason, he needs prayer. And I'm going to keep praying for him. And in that case, that's the story I wanted to share. I hope you learned something from this because I sure did. God bless you. Praise the Lord.